Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Greater Houston Partnerships 2010 State of the County Address. Please rise for the presentation of colors presented by the Harris County Sheriff's Office. Now, please welcome Staff Sergeant Ryan Wicker, U.S. Army non-commissioned officer. Staff Sergeant Ryan Wicker is an airborne sniper qualified combat infantryman. Sergeant Wicker was awarded the Army Commendation Medal for Valor as a member of Task Force Fury for demonstrating courage and valor beyond the call of duty on April 10, 2007, while in direct combat with a numerically superior force in Afghanistan. Sergeant Wicker's actions undoubtedly saved the lives of several paratroopers in his platoon. Sergeant Wicker's commendable performance keeps with the highest tradition of military service and reflects great credit upon himself and the United States of America. Staff Sergeant Wicker will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the Republic for what it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome Cecily Gordon, a senior at the high school for the performing and visual arts, for the singing of our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Reverend Robert Jefferson. Our Father and our God, we ask you, God, to touch us right now as we hear the state of the county, a good county with good people and good love. 
We pray for more unity for our people of this county, that we will be one of the best counties in the whole wide world. God, we thank you. We thank you for the people that you have in place right now. And we pray, pray your blessings upon them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please welcome Executive Vice President and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, Tracy McDaniel. Thank you. Please, please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Greater Houston Partnership's 2010 State of the County Address. I am so glad to see so many of your faces here this afternoon. Clearly, clearly, this is the spot to be, Judge Emmett, because we have rain. It is cold in Harris County. We had challenges with the par our parking, and I know many of you experienced that. And none of us, none of us hunkered down. We are all here to see you. As the primary advocate for the Greater Houston's business community, GHP works to keep its members connected to regional leadership and informed on the issues that affect you. At our re recent annual meeting, our chairman, Patrick Oxford, reflected this organization's commitment to its legacy to leadership and the responsibility that comes with that commitment. He spoke about community alignment, speaking in a singular voice on common issues as a key means by which we can ensure this region remains the best place to live, work, and prosper. Today's State of the County Address is a wonderful example of community alignment at work. While GHP represents the 10-county region, Harris County comprises a large portion of that region. Harris County is home to 27 of the region's 29 Fortune 500 companies. Nearly 70,000 businesses representing a wide variety of industries. And several of the region's crown jewels are located here, including the Port of Houston, the Texas Medical Center, Bush Intercontinental and Hobby Airports, NASA, and many of our fine colleges and universities. Therefore, having our fingers firmly on the pulse of Harris County is central to our ability to speak in one voice on the issues that matter most. We are pleased to have Judge Emmett with us today, and we look forward to his remarks on the state of the county. As the primary advocate for the region's business community, our board of directors is reflective of that. They represent the business community from the largest corporations to the small business owner. They give their time to, for valuable leadership in our mission to secure regional economic prosperity. And we want to thank you all for your service. We are fortunate to have member, many of our members with us today, and I'd like to recognize them. Let's start with our chairman, Patrick Oxford. Our vice chairman, Larry Kellner. We are joined by our president and CEO, Jeff Mosley. Would all of our board members currently in the audience please stand? Thank you for joining us today. We are
we're so pleased to have some very special guests at our head table, and I'll introduce a few. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Gwen Emmett, the First Lady of Harris County. And Houston's Mayor, Anise Parker. Now a big thank you goes to our event sponsors for your commitment and support for the event today. I've seen several familiar faces in the crowd today, but I'm most excited when I see the new faces. For those of you joining the partnership for the first time, we want to encourage you to get connected. Get connected by visiting our member services team before you leave today, or visit our website at Houston.org. At this time, please join me in recognizing the elected officials and Consular Corps here today. And a very special welcome will go out to the Harris County elected officials delegation. Would you all please stand? Thank you all. Enjoy your lunch, and thanks for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mayor Anise Parker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nancy Parra from the League of Women Voters. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Nancy Parra, President of the League of Women Voters of the Houston area. I want to welcome you to the annual State of the County Address, one of the Greater Houston Partnership's signature events. The League of Women Voters, as you may know, is a nonpartisan political organization that works closely with the Greater Houston Partnership. The League's mission is to encourage informed and active participation in government, to increase understanding of major policy issues, and to influence public policy through education and advocacy. The Houston Area League sponsors the State of the County Address as one way of attaining its goal of an informed voting public. The, the event comes under the purview of the Greater Houston Partnership because of its growth and popularity and attendance, and the League continues to work with the partnership and has representatives serving on its varied committees. Each year for this event, the League of the Houston Area publishes its Voters' Key, an indispensable booklet containing the names and contact information for all elected officials from the President of the United States to the Justice of the Peace. We've placed a copy on each of your seats, so don't leave without it. Again, thank you for coming, and welcome to the annual State of the County Address. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mayor Anise Parker. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And my job is to get everybody quieted and back to their seats for the keynote speaker. Like me, the man we're about to hear from is a proud graduate of Rice University. And of course, he's a little bit older, a little bit. So we missed each other during those college years. But I had the opportunity to meet him uh, just after he was named to the position of county judge. He had, there was actually a reception for him in Austin, 
and I made a point of attending. I wanted to meet him on neutral territory. And after we did the secret rice handshake and uh, did our, our bonding on which college did you go to, we actually went to a corner and had a, a substantive discussion on several issues not really related to local government. And I truly appreciated the opportunity to get to know him as a person before I got to know him as a politician. And it may come as a surprise to many of you that despite our different political affiliations, Harris County Judge Ed Emmett and I tend to agree more than we disagree. In fact, the two of us have the kind of working relationship that I hope to forge with the rest of county government and with our partners in the surrounding cities, many of whom have representatives here today. Judge Emmett and I understand that this region must rise together, must work together, must coordinate our activities together, particularly in a time of declining tax revenues. Judge Emmett had an extensive record of public service and accomplishment before he came into uh, county government. He's been county commissioner, or excuse me, county judge since uh, March of 2007, so that means he has been on the job almost exactly three years for today's lunch. As county judge, Ed Emmett is also director of Harris County's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management a role that took on special significance when Hurricane Ike struck the Gulf Coast in September of 2008. He was widely praised locally and nationally for his calm leadership during and after Ike's devastating landfall. And yes, the hunker down phrase has now gone into the lexicon here uh, and uh, we use it regularly to some chagrin. Judge Emmett has won numerous awards during his tenure as chief executive of the nation's third largest county, including most recently the 2009 Distinguished Public Service Award from the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas, the 2008 Presidential Call to Service Award from President George W. Bush, the 2008 Distinguished Leader Award from Leadership Houston, the 2008 Weather Hero Award from the John C. Freeman Weather Museum. Dear respected Judge Emmett, I hope he doesn't receive another weather, weather award because that will mean that we have experienced another weather event. Of course, I have ultimate confidence that he and I working together will be able to face that event and move the city and county forward. Judge Emmett is also very active in the larger community. He serves on numerous boards, including acting as chairman of the Harris County Juvenile Board and on the executive steering committee of the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative. He's a board member of the Joint City-County Commission on Children, the Tejano Center for Community Concerns, the Houston-Galveston Area Council, the Houston-Galveston Area Council Transportation Policy Council and the American Society of Transportation and Logistics. He's an acknowledged transportation expert. He has been an excellent county judge. Please join me in welcoming and honoring my colleague in local government, Harris County Judge Ed Emmett. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. Before I start, let me personally thank the Harris County Honor Guard and Cecily Gordon for their honoring of the Texas flag and the U.S. flag and our great country. And I would be remiss if I didn't particularly honor one more time Sergeant Wicker for all that he has done.
<clears throat> and while mentioning American heroes, I have to mention, many of you in this room knew him, but we lost an American hero yesterday in former Congressman Charlie Wilson. <clears throat> it's fair to applaud for Charlie. He would even want you to whoop and yell a little bit. <clears throat> Thank you to the Greater Houston Partnership and the League of Women Voters for once again hosting the State of the County Address. And of course, thanks to the sponsors for without their generous support, we wouldn't be here today. And a special thanks to Mayor Parker, not just for the kind introduction, but for the strong working partnership and friendship she and I have already forged. You know, after the Civil War, Oliver Wendell Holmes described the strength of his generation by saying, we have shared the incommunicable experience of war. Well, Anise, you and I have shared the incommunicable experience of Rice University. <clears throat> and there were times that it seemed like it. Although you're young enough to where you didn't even have to take Math 100, so you, you got off the hook. Beyond our shared past, we now have a shared future. Our constituents, constituents rightly expect Harris County and the city of Houston to work together whenever possible to eliminate duplication and to provide efficiency. For Harris County, that spirit of cooperation extends even beyond the city of Houston to the other 33 municipalities in Harris County, and yes, to the counties that surround us. Now add to that mix metro, state agencies, a myriad of municipal utility districts, and other special districts. The possibilities for cooperation are almost endless. And I say that with great fervor. The possibilities for cooperation. I don't see it as an obstacle. I don't see it as a burden. I see it as a possibility. But the cooperation most needed, and to which I most look forward, particularly given my past, is with our legislative delegation, led by the Dean of the Senate, Senator John Whitmire, who's here today. Senator. <clears throat> because county government is an arm of the state, everything we do is through a grant of power from either the state constitution or the legislature. It is vital for us to collectively recognize that Harris County is unique. Not only is Harris County the most populous in Texas, but we have a vast amount of populated unincorporated territory in this county. In fact, if you took the unincorporated part of Harris County, it would qualify as the seventh largest city in the United States. That makes us clearly different than the rural counties in Texas and different even from those other urban counties that don't have that much population in their unincorporated area. And speaking of our population, I must take this opportunity to encourage everyone and every business to participate in the upcoming census. An accurate count of all our residents is vital to our future. We can't even argue about it. I mean, that's just a fact. We have to do that. But just last night, I was reading a book totally unrelated to anything, and in it, I came across the 1910 census numbers for Houston and Harris County. No, I do not stay up reading books about the census. <laughs> but it was about somebody who moved here in 1910, and I thought that was fascinating. The population of the city of Houston 100 years ago was 78,800. The population of the entire county was 138,726. We've changed a little bit, and more changes are coming. This is my third state of the county speech, and I am, as always, honored 
to be here representing Harris County Commissioner's Court, and I'm very pleased that Commissioner Sylvia Garcia has joined me today. Commissioner. <laughs> Given the condition of the economy and its impact on county property values, Harris County is facing a challenging year. Nothing, however, like the financial challenges facing local governments in other parts of the country. There is a silver lining to our dark economic cloud, <clears throat> and that is the solid financial foundation that has been built in Harris County by previous Harris County governments. Now, not to carry the metaphor too far, but we will weather this storm because of steady guidance. Obviously, Commissioner's Court has managed taxes and spending wisely for a long time. But the steady guidance to which I refer comes from a low-key gentleman by the name of Dick Raycraft. Dick is our county budget officer and director of management services. And in my three years, I'm no longer surprised when people, I think, completely unrelated to county government, Tell me a story of how Dr. Raycraft did this or that to bring a program into reality or to find a creative way to solve a crisis. So no discussion of the state of Harris County would be complete without recognizing the 42-year contribution of Dick Raycraft. Dr. Raycraft, we honor you. <laughs> And Dr. Raycraft would be the first to say he didn't do this alone and, and he would give full credit to the other county employees as he should. And so I would be remiss if I didn't recognize not only my staff who's here today, but all county employees, if you'd please stand up. As I stand here today, Harris County Commissioner's Court and the various departments and offices are in the midst of preparing the coming year's budget. There will likely be more changes in this coming year to the budget than in any year in memory because county government will be taking the same approach as households and families throughout not only the county but the country we will be prioritizing our spending. But frankly, I view these times as more opportunity, providing county officials with the incentive to move closer to some form of zero-based budgeting, whereby spending programs have to be justified every year, not merely continued through inertia. That will be a good thing. But the state of Harris County is more than its budget. So those of you who came today thinking you were going to hear a lecture about tax rates and spending flows, it's not going to happen. Instead, I want to talk to you about a different state of Harris County. Almost every spiritual tradition encourages some form of meditation, contemplation, introspection, prayer, whatever you call it, and a key practice in many such traditions is to ask over and over the same question, who am I? And in thinking about this address during an early morning walk, I came to a similar realization about Harris County as an entity. Who is it? What is the state of Harris County? As the county judge, <clears throat> I can rattle off <clears throat> a long list of initiatives, programs, projects, all of which tie back pretty much to matters of finance, transportation, flood control, criminal justice, health care, emergency management. <clears throat> the list is long and from my perspective puts Harris County among the national leaders in local governments. Despite some challenges, 
I think the present state of the county is quite good and healthy. For me, though, the focus really has to be on the future. And the key to that future is continued economic development. That is why organizations like the Greater Houston Partnership must truly be our partners, partners to all local governments, must be part of that process. <clears throat> but few residents have a broad, sweeping view of the county. They know about taxes. Yeah, they know about taxes, and we hear about that. And they see signs of flood control or other improvements. But how would some of them describe the state of the county? They don't get to stand here. The county judge does. What about a 35-year-old secretary stuck in traffic on US Highway 290? It's going to be late for her job. Every morning, she gets angry. Why can't somebody do something about this? That is her state of the county. It's also her state of the city and the state <coughs> and whoever else she can blame. <clears throat> Solve her traffic problems, and life is good. And she's not alone. And that's why Harris County Commissioners and the Harris County Toll Road Authority are completing as many projects as they can as fast as they can, as much as the resources will allow. And I will say in that specific quarter, early funding, and I stress early, has been approved for the steps that will improve the 290-610 interchange and begin to develop commuter rail between Houston and Hempstead and perhaps go all the way to Austin. <clears throat> To the woman stuck in traffic, though, I would say, and I think Senator Whitmire would say, join with us and support state legislators who in next year's legislative session will have to make some tough, wise decisions about transportation funding. It doesn't come for free. And the legislature is going to have to be supported in their efforts to fund projects. Let's go from that lady to one that you'll really like this image particularly given today. On a warm spring day, a family strolls the trails of Mercer Arboretum. To them, the state of the county is exhilarating and a foundation for learning and for creating memories. Commissioner Jerry Eversole and his employees are building a legacy for future generations or on almost any Sunday afternoon in far northwest Harris County. Paul Rushing Park is the site of cricket matches. Yes, I said cricket matches, in which the diversity of our com community is on display. For the thousands of people who play or follow cricket in Harris County and the surrounding counties, the state of Harris County is welcoming and cooperative due to the efforts of Commissioner Steve Raddick and his staff. Along Galveston Bay, lives are still disrupted by Hurricane Ike. Those folks' view of all levels of government is colored entirely by their desire to regain normalcy. Their state of the county is focused on such things as the rebuilding of their homes, the rebuilding of the Seabrook Evelyn Metter Library, clearing up FEMA funding issues, and preparing for future storms. All of that effort's being led by Commissioner Sylvia Garcia and her staff. And somewhere in Harris County, there's a group of 10-year-olds. They're pretty much alone after school and during the summer. And if asked about their state of the county, well, they'd probably just stare at you. But Commissioner El Franco Lee's support of numerous after-school programs and his innovative street Olympic Olympics have in many uncounted instances prevented those 10-year-olds from falling into the other jurisdictions of the county, such as juvenile probation. Of course, I could also cite someone who uses the toll road system, probably grumbling about 
having to pay a toll, but not necessarily understanding just how vital that system has been to the mobility and economic development, not only of Harris County, but of our entire region. That was farsighted on the part of the county to start that toll road system. Our next month, when hundreds of thousands of people descend upon the Reliant Park Complex for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, very few will comment on the facilities they're in. But we will get phone calls and emails and letters and people will take me aside because they're all going to look over and they're going to see the dome. And they're going to want to know, what are you going to do about the Harris County Dome Stadium, better known as the Astrodome? It's still an icon and it's still a symbol of Harris County. And it is still a project that we are committed to solving. There's no question. Yes, there are many states of the county. Most of those I have mentioned develop their views through daily life and routine experiences. County officials and employees should always listen to those voices because those are the people that pay the taxes. Those are the people that use our services. Their state of the county probably matters more than my state of the county. But there are some other views that we must seek out. In fact, we must speak for them. A 13-year-old boy who is dared by his buddies to steal from a local store finds himself alone and scared, though he'd never admit that, in the juvenile detention center. Those surroundings and how he is treated is his state of the county. And what's more for the rest of us, how the county deals with him will determine whether he becomes a productive member of society or ends up in the adult criminal justice system or even worse. Since September 2007, Harris County has been working with a grant from the Annie Casey Foundation to make sure that our juvenile justice system is the best possible. The county's juvenile judges District Attorney Pat Lykos, the Juvenile Probation Department, and many others, like Reverend Jefferson and Ministers Against Crime, are committed to stemming the tide of youthful crime that leads to a life of crime. We have to do that. A 40-year-old man with significant mental health issues who cannot function completely on his own, but who can work and live a meaningful life if given proper care. Without that care, he is very likely to end up living under a highway overpass where he becomes part of the revolving door into and out of the criminal justice system, into and out of the Harris County Jail, and probably the Harris County Hospital District. What is the state of the county to that man? Some great work is being done in that area by the Mental Health Mental Retardation Authority of Harris County and other public and private groups. But so much more is needed. More coordinated, focused attention to the needs of those with mental health issues has got to be done. It's a personal cause for me, and I think I speak for the entire commissioner's court. We see that as a problem that we have to address going forward in Harris County. A 25-year-old mother of three living in a rundown apartment complex. Her youngest, an infant, was awake all night with a high fever. But for reasons familiar to us all, she is afraid to take the infant to the hospital. But finally, she arranges for a neighbor to watch her other children. She struggles with trying to figure out how to get on a bus and get to Ben Tobb calls in sick at work, and eventually makes her way to the Ben Tobb emergency room, where the good news is the infant receives the highest quality care. That's the good news. The bad news is 
the young mother herself has not had a routine checkup in years. Eventually, her health will deteriorate, and her children will struggle in so many ways. For the state of Harris County to be acceptable, we must do everything we can to give people like her access to a neighborhood clinic as their medical home so her children can receive proper immunizations and the entire family can receive preventive care instead of crisis care. That has to be a goal. Yes, Harris County is in better shape than almost anywhere else in the country, if not the world. Yes, the elected and appointed officials fully understand that we need to constantly improve infrastructure, particularly transportation infrastructure, in order to realize this area's potential to become the gateway to North America. It's very simple. If goods and people cannot move, our economy will stagnate. People will quit moving here. In fact, people will start moving away from here. But more and more in the coming years, the final analysis will be that the state of the county is and should be measured in human terms. If we are short-sighted now about these matters of which I spoke, future costs associated with health care, criminal justice, and other issues will simply spiral out of control, leaving us unable to meet either social or infrastructure needs. And we will find ourselves with too many unhealthy and uneducated people among us. The cost of that will be staggering. Our state right now is okay. But if we don't take steps now to deal with what we know are going to be the future crises, then we will pay a heavy price. That is why it is so important today to recognize the state of Harris County from so many different views. For my state of the county is a snapshot. Others provide the lens that allows us to look into the future. We are well positioned to bring that future into focus. Harris County taxpayers cannot pay for all of it. It will take all of us in the public, private, and nonprofit sector working together to do it. But we have a strong foundation. That is the really good news today. We have a strong foundation from which to start. All of us working together can and should use that foundation to make sure that Harris County leads the nation into the future. That's my simple message today. We're okay right now. We can be a whole lot better, but we can only be a whole lot better if we make the commitment now and we agree to work together and we agree to cooperate and we agree to view the state of the county from all those different viewpoints. Thank you again for the opportunity to share the state of this great county.